Welcome back to another Theme Park Wizard History video. This one will be on the iconic Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. It'll be separated into two segments. The intro version and the um and the uh the timeline and uh riot history version. So let's get started. So, the iconic Pirates of the Caribbean attraction is a dark ride that started off at Disneyland and eventually expanded its way to the Magic Kingdom, Tokyo Disneyland, Disneyland Paris, and an all-new film-based version that opened in 2016 at Shanghai Disneyland. The ride in the first three versions, or three, <laughs> sorry, four versions, excluding Shanghai Disneyland, tells the story of, the, of a band of pirates in the West Indies around the Caribbean Sea in the 17th and 18th centuries with the saga of their voyages, troubles, and exports. This was the last ride, the very last ride, that Walt Disney himself oversaw, but he died three months before it opened, unfortunately. After immense popularity, because this was supposed to be just a Disneyland ride, but after immense popularity, the ride was replicated seven years later at the Magic Kingdom, taking away from the Western River, uh, Western River Expedition budget, which was supposed to be an extension of their Frontierland, which is very important. And also, the ride became the basis for the hugely successful film series that is getting a sixth installment in a spinoff in just a few years. It's also important to note that again. All these fa most of these facts, or just about all these facts that I'm going to discuss, are from the Disneyland, Magic Kingdom, Tokyo Disneyland, Disneyland Paris, and Disneyland Paris versions of the attraction. Shanghai Disneyland is an all-new ride system and an all-new um, plot, and I'll say something about that at the end of the video. So this very old attraction opened in March, another March opening, <laughs> March 18th, 1967, right here at the Disneyland Resort. It is located within the New Orleans Square portion of Disneyland, which houses also just two attractions, <laughs> Pirates and Haunted Mansion, which has a potential history video coming later, depending on how this one does. And the facade is evoking uh, an antebellum era house. In the, ante in the antebellum era of New Orleans, it's topped by a 31-star United States flag, which would indicate that it's in the 1950s, because again, <laughs> there's only 31 states in the United States at that time. For California was actually, um, well, actually, yeah, California is one of the states. And this attraction had a very interesting history. It's another one of the attractions, like Indiana Jones, which I'll link that history video in the right corner, that was originally envisioned as a walk-through wax museum, to, or walk-through attraction. This one was a walk-through wax museum. But since It's a Small World was so successful at the 1964 World's Fair and at the Disney Parks, Disney wanted to employ the same rights as the most Pirates of the Caribbean, which is why, if you look, they're nearly identical the same. The boats of It's a Small World and Pirates are nearly identical. And uh, their their appearance, obviously, the boats for pirates are brown and themed to pirate ships, whereas the boats of it's a small world are more colorful and themed to everyone. Some very interesting details they had the ornate initials of Walt Disney and Roy Roy Disney, which is W D and R D. Those can be seen entwined in the iron railings above the ride's entrance at Disneyland. That's actually something I didn't know until I was doing research for this video. So. Next year when Disneyland opens, I definitely will want to go to Pirates, or when I go on Pirates, I definitely want to look at that, the rise entrance. I wonder if it was in the show building entrance or above the bridge entrance, but I'll have to definitely see if, um, if I can find those, and if someone knows where they are, definitely comment down below where I should be able to look for the, the initials when I go um, to Disney next, uh, next year, and I'll definitely film that as maybe a POV of Pirates as well. Also, an overhead sign at the boat dock, which is the ride's loading entrance, is named for a famous pirate, Jean, Jean Lafitte. And 
that is um, he fought along the U.S. Army in the Battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812, which is something I also did not know and I learned while I was researching the history facts for this video. <laughs> the second floor of the facade was originally designed to be a private Disney family apartment, Walt's, or a Disney family apartment, yeah, Walt's apartment. However, it opened in spring 1987 as a museum, a retail and museum space called the Disney Gallery, and in 2007, of course, is now the Disneyland Dream Suite. When something else I learned with, during this history, uh, the, the research for this video, was this ride was manufactured by Aero Development. <laughs> Aero Development manufactured a lot of things here at Disneyland. and They manufactured the Matterhorn, um, which was, again, the first tubular steel roller coaster in the world. And like this video and comment below if you'd like, if you'd like a Matterhorn history video. Also, at other parks, at most it will be at Six Flags Magic Mountain, just up the road from Disneyland. <laughs> they manufactured the still operating, still operating jet stream attraction. As the ride's only flume, or the park's only flume ride, or actually no, the park's second flume ride after Log Jammer was taken out. The tidal wave and jet stream, the more popular of the two, um, of the remaining water rides, still remaining. So that is pretty cool. Um, from Aero Development and Aero Consulted also in the next two installations of the attraction. The ride's passenger boats again, are very similar to those in the patent assigned to Walt Disney Productions, but it was filed by Mr. Edgar Morgan, who is one of the founders of Aero Development. Aero also, as we just noted, participated in the design and development of many rides at Disneyland from 1953 but most famous, of course, being the Matterhorn. There are over 630,000 gallons, that's a lot, 630,000 gallons of recycled water that pump through the traction each, well, in total, that pump through the basically each day. 53 audio animatronics, which is quite of a lot, quite a bit, especially for at that time, and Oh, sorry, 53 audio animatronic animals and birds, which is just a lot of animals and birds in general, and 75 animatronic pirates and villagers, which is well over 100, I think about 128, if I'm doing the math correctly, I'm just kind of doing that, doing that in my my head really quick, 128-ish um, audio animatronic total in the ride. It takes three whole days to empty and refill the bayou for renovations. And across from the boarding area, which is the Blue Bio res uh, is the Blue Bio Restaurant, of course, which is made to look like a backyard dinner party of a southern plantation, and it does it very, very well. The restaurant happened to open the same day as the ride, and is considered one of the original theme restaurants in the entire world. Walt Disney World visitors, again, this ride is supposed to become just to Disneyland only, but Disney World vis visitors were so disappointed, and not being able to see the ride that they demanded it come to Disney World. So uh, Disney put in kind of a rushed version. It's not as, um, it doesn't seem as thought out as our vision, but they kind of put in a rushed version of Pirates of the Caribbean. Again, taking away s some of that Western River Expedition budget. Um, and that one opened on December 15th, 1973. And then, of course, Versions followed in Tokyo, Paris, and then the all-new version in Shanghai Disneyland, which opened in 2016, and that was uses an entire new ride system. It's based on, um, it's called like a Pirates of the Caribbean: Battle of a Sunken Treasure, I believe. There's um, it has uh Davy Jones in it, and it's a mainly mainly screen-based attraction, not really audio animatronics, but there's some animatronics, but it's mainly screen-based and. To track this boat ride, and the boats can go forward and backwards and turn, and each boat's in a single scene. It's a very, it's a really cool um, ride system. If you want, again, a comment below. I can do a whole video on how that particular ride system for that ride works in a separate video. But let me know if you'd like that in the comments below. Back to Disneyland, the opening of the Disney Gallery in 1987 coincided with the ride's outside queue area being completely redone to improve traffic flows. This is when the bridge walkway, the now famous very crowded bridge walkway, was built 
um, in front of the entrance, and it is supposed to allow crowds to pass through New Orleans Square without New Orleans Square without causing traffic jams. I'll guess wait in line for the ride. As you know, when Pyres over here uh, has an hour plus waits during busy normal times, the bridge gets pretty darn crowded. So maybe it's time for yet another redo. But those are all the facts up the history of the facts from the construction and design up to the opening of the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Disneyland and some other versions that followed in other Disney parks because it was just so dang popular and still remains so dang popular to this day. I would like to know what is your favorite scene in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride and what is your favorite memory of being of, of what's your favorite memory of being on the attraction? As a bonus, what's your favorite Pirates of the Caribbean movie, if you like any of them? My favorite, I think, particularly is Dead Man's Chest or At World's End. I like, uh, I like particularly Davy Jones. and I love Captain Jack Sparrow, so I hear he might not be in the new one. And uh, that gives me quite the case to not see it. But let me know in the comments below, comments below what you guys think. Like this video for more theme park updates and subscribe. Because you love me. <laughs> Alright, have a great day and have a fantastic day, everybody.